love, light, and blessings. Shamanic Iwag Priestess here. And thank you so much for being a subscriber. And for those of you that commented in my last video, that liked, raised up the algorithm, thank you so much for that. Um, and also for participating in my giveaway that we're celebrating me um, reaching my goal of 8,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for that. Um, so if you want to participate in a uh, free giveaway, I'm doing a four minute one question free giveaway to those of you that want to be part of that. Um, watch this video and I will let you know how to do that. Um, you have to watch this video though. And somewhere in this video, I'll let you know the secret way that you can participate, but I'm not going to let you know right now. Um, you have to actually watch the video and I'll let you know how you can participate. Uh, those of you that did, thank you. I added your name to the drawing. I will be responding to the comments in the last video, so don't worry. But I did add your names to those of you that secretly participated in the um, having your name added to the free drawing that we're going to do in the first week of March. Okay, so this video is going to be a very laid back chat. I have some really exciting announcements that I'm going to be making as far as um, memberships, some new services that I'm going to be adding to my website, um, mentioning some existing services, and also wanting to have a quick chat about three tarot cards that I feel like um, I kind of want to draw from a really important conversation about life path and spiritual calling and things like that. These cards are very coveted cards. A lot of people feel like these are the cards that ideally I would love to be called into doing. Um, there's this like beautiful, um, like awakening, um, spirituality has become um, more mainstream nowadays. You have this social media, you have YouTube, TikTok, witch talk. You know, a lot of people are trying to get into spirituality. A lot of people, you know, especially with recent um, events, some people dream of like, you know, giving up their careers and going into business. And I think those are good things. But it's also like a double-edged sword. And then some people, they actually do give up their careers and are like, this is not what I thought it would be. It's kind of like that trend where people see people living out. Um, they're like, you know, rents are really high and they give up their like um, apartment or houses or whatever. And they go into van life and then they find out van life isn't as exciting as, as they thought it was. So that's kind of like that whole like spirituality th trend. So I wanted to kind of have a tea and tarot chat about these three cards that and get into like that and have like a real in-depth conversation about what it actually takes to live that life. So that way you can kind of really think about it and I'll give you my thoughts and things like that. And we'll have like a real conversation. So if any of these topics interest you, please stay tuned, grab a snack. And in my instance, grab some tea and let's talk about it. Okay. So let's get into it. Okay, I was, it's funny, I paused the video to pull out the tarot cards because I thought I had them out. And I had originally, I believe I said three, but now I feel like there's five cards that I want to talk about that are highly coveted cards that I feel like really speak on this topic heavily. So before we get started with that, let's get to really quickly talk about a couple of things. And it's funny because I paused on three, three, three timestamps. So I feel like definitely an Ascendant Masters um, topic. Okay. Number one, memberships. I decided to add a new feature to memberships on all membership levels. I will leave a link if you want to join and you can read about the various benefits. Um, um, that way you can look for yourself what the different various benefits are. And if you're interested, you can become a member. That way you can support me on making content um, and things like that here on YouTube. Um, and I wanted to give you guys voting power. So if you are a member, no matter what tier you're in, um, I just released a poll yesterday, Sunday, um, and the poll will close on Saturday. I have three topics that I want to talk about on um, next on um, this. I want to create the video this Sunday. So this Saturday and then have it released Sunday. Sorry. I already have all three topics scripted and researched. So pretty much. All I have to do is 
upload <laughs> um, and actually record. So it's, it's all good. Um, and basically, so it's to be uploaded next week. Okay. Um, so my upload next week, you're going to be, you members are going to be the ones to get to pick it. So there's three different topics that you could choose from. Um, you guys get to vote on what I'm going to upload next week. And um, yeah, you get to vote. And your last day to vote will be Saturday. And then Sunday, I will be, um, be upload uh, recording and then uploading that video. Either that Sunday or that following Monday, it will be for you to watch. And it will be available on my main channel. So make sure you vote. The video with the highest vote will be the video that will be released next week. So, and it's um, posted on your membership community page. Also on your membership community page will always be whatever videos is available on the intermediate level, your one card a day at all levels um, and things like that. So anything that has to do with memberships always posted on your membership community page, but all levels, levels one, two, and three, you guys will be able to vote on the weekly uploads on my main YouTube channel. Um, it just started yesterday, so I thought I would post that. Also, all my reading services are literally on sale to celebrate Malak History Month, limited time only. So all my services are on sale for Black History Month. So take advantage of that. Um, also, I have put a service that I haven't had available. I have three clients working me with this and I'm very excited. It's a package deal and it's called Shamanic Healing. So for those of you that don't know, I am um, a healer, a culandera, shamanic healer. Um, and it is four sessions. So you get your pre-session, your consultation diagnosis. So some people have spirits that are intrusive or spiritual blockages, energetic blockages, whatever it is, we will have a consultation, very traditional style. Um, I will talk, you know, I will consult with my guides, such as, you know, um, the angels or la madama or the orisha or whatever, whoever, you know, I feel called to communicate with my guides. They And then we will ask them, you know, what type of spirit it is, because there have been people that have came to me that they have been told, oh, it's a demon. And a lot of times it actually is not. Um, it could actually be something way less harmful than that. And it could be something as easy as giving an offering or having my spirits intercede on your behalf. And those spirits leave on their own and it's not even nothing, you know. Um, um, it could be something as simple as just getting your yourself spiritually aligned. Um, this service can help with if you feel like you have a spiritual life purpose and you feel like there's blockages, um, we can help to remove those blockages, things like that. So that consultation will let us know what your spiritual diagnosis is. OK, this is not a physical healing. This is a spiritual healing, you know, that, that you're going to be doing. But this first session covers the initial, if you will, diagnosis, like what will be the prescription. Then you have three separate sessions that we will schedule, not back to back. Sometimes it'll be one, you'll see me once a week, once every two weeks, we'll see, you know, we'll, then we'll have the consultation, which is included in the package is one price. Uh, we'll schedule the, the, the first actual session where the treatment will start. So um, it can be anything from sound therapy, color therapy, um, there have been times when I've done this healing where we do healing by proxy. So there might be a poppet or a custom candle that represents you, or I might mail like, um, a talisman that has an infused spirit that's going to watch over you, or, um, a lucky hand is made for you, or a mojo or gris gris bag is made for you, or some type of protective talisman is made for you that is like an ongoing spell and I'll help you to feed it. So like you're always protected over type of situation. Okay. So this is good for, if you feel like, um, you're someone who's suffering from, uh, ancestral or generational curses or blockages. It, it's a very old fashioned root worker type of, um, consultation for that. Like a spell is not going to suffice only like you kind of need more of a, one-on-one, -on -one, I have to channel a spirit. Let's get to the root and bones of the situation. So um, I brought that back. I haven't done those in like years, but I'm in a good place now where I feel like I can do that again. So 
Um, and you know, it's basically you're paying that price because it's four, it's a pre consultation, and then you're getting three separate sessions. Um, they might be a light visual, which means like there will be candles burning in my altar, not on top of the I'm we're talking through Skype one on one and doing separate rituals, you know, three part rituals, things like that. So there might be energy exchanges, like there's a bunch of stuff involved. So definitely bringing back my shamanic healing. I have removed the energetic healings and um, we're doing the shamanic healing now. I'm finishing up the people that already scheduled their energetic healings. That's being finished up. And now we're going into the shamanic healings um, because that's what I'm being called to. We're in a very, a lot of people are having a lot of spiritual, the veil is thinning right now. And this is a service that I feel like it's the right time to do. So if you're wanting to do that, a lot of people are getting a lot of spirits coming into dreams. This is the, this is the time, like if that's happening and you're having a lot of like, dreams where spirits are trying to contact with the other side this is kind of like that type of service that can help you with that because i can channel and see you know who's that spirit that's trying to contact you that is like that type of service okay so it's called the shamanic healing service okay it's a, a, a consultation and then three um healing sessions that are they're not done on the same day they're like on separate occasions sometimes it's could be, you know, once we'll meet up once a week. Some people, um, it's very intensive, very emotional. So the spirits will be like, okay, we'll meet up two weeks from now. But the, the case is like, it'll be four sessions all together. It's case by case. Everybody's different depending on your case. And it's an individual thing, but it's very beautiful. And everybody who's done it has given me five stars and they've loved it. And it's been game changing. A lot of people who have suffered from a lot of spiritual trauma have said like this has been so life-changing so definitely shamanic healing services are back spiritual court investigative readings are really good if you feel like um you know the lowest the godishas things like that are calling to you we can definitely find out about that um things like that okay Alrighty then um for the seven african powers if i did a spiritual court investigative reading for you in the past and an odisha spirit came out in your spirit court reading then yes, you can take that class with me just to answer that question. Okay. Um, the Black History Month. Okay. Also, if you've noticed that the wait times have been cut down drastically. Oh, and running back to that. If you never got a spirit court investigative reading with me in the past and you're interested in taking the seven African powers or the 21 division class with me, um, you would have to book a spirit court investigative reading with me to see if any of those spirits walk with you because it would be kind of a waste of your money if those spirits, um, could they kind of, spirits choose us and that's just the truth, especially from close traditions. And if you take a class and the spirits don't want to work with you, it's kind of a waste of your money. So, and if you take the, if you buy the spirit court investigative reading and those spirits don't walk with you, it's still not refundable because I still perform the reading. So just, you know, just be aware of that. Um, as far as uh, if you've noticed that the rescheduling, the rescheduling, if you notice that the wait times are lessened, one, my health has improved, but also a couple of people that were abusing the rescheduling policy. So I do let people reschedule if they miss an appointment, but there were people that were constantly like, I only allow one reschedule, but they were like always missing their appointments. So they'll be like, oh, you know, reschedule. And then they'll like, always show up to their rescheduling, but always miss their original appointment. It was just like, then they will not get the point. Like, yeah, but I pay, I understand that. But like, every time you miss the original one, it's like somebody else could take that slot because you don't call me, you don't tell me. And the thing is like you on this, with the scheduling link, you have the option, a lot of people do it, to go on that scheduling link that I give you every time you guys buy a reading and hit the option to reschedule or cancel an appointment up to an hour before the session. So unless it's like an emergency, you have up to an hour before the set appointment occurs to reschedule. So, you know, I understand that people forget sometimes, but always forgetting because it's not fair because when you don't show up that hour, that 30 minutes, whatever was set aside for you, somebody else could have taken that spot. By doing that constantly, it makes wait times longer than they need to be 
when then you reschedule and again you taking up instead of taking that one 30 minute slot that you miss you take up two 30 minute slots so some people I've actually had to say, since you do that so much, I don't think because you're not getting it and you're not really sorry that I'm the right reader for you. So spirit is beautiful because spirit was like, you know, spirit just kept telling me like, you have to kind of cut certain people off. They're just not the vibration. Um, spirit gave me like three clients for every person I cut off because it is what it is. Um, and you know, when spirit is, when spirit is like, Hey, it's time to cut off certain people as much as it hurts you to do it. It is what it is. I had to do that. Um, they gave me three different clients that actually respect my time per one person I had to cut off, unfortunately. And um, so, yeah, so that helped a lot. And then also, and it also helped my mental and physical health because I'm not stressing out about that. Um, it's okay occasionally. Like I have clients that have been reading for years and, okay, and I'll be like, oh, are you okay? Because it happens. Like sometimes I have to reschedule. But when I'm saying like I, the people that I cut off were like people that were like, Every time we had a reading, I was like, oh, let's see if they're even going to show up. Because it was always like, we missing an appointment. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the, it's like, it's like that person at work when you be like, oh, Alan, uh, Alexa or Al, uh, Alan or Bill is, is on the schedule today. Let's see if Bill even shows up because 75% of the time he's going to call out sick. You know what I mean? That's very stressful because it's like somebody else could have had that time slot. Even if you're paying for that session, like, that's just not fair you know, because then, you know, you're making people wait longer for a reading. It's, it's not fair, you know, and I'm sitting there calling, calling, calling. Also, I used to have a 10 minute grace period. I changed it to five minutes, which is all over my website and everything. Um, and that also has helped a lot because uh, now, um, if, um, now I, if you're more than five minutes late, it's considered a misappointment. Um, that's better because that has also made wait times for in between readings you know two three days four days five days the most instead of like seven eight nine ten days you know and that also makes a difference so i've been very happy some people are like oh my god i, I was able to book a same day reading you know for the shorter readings or next day like I, i'm i'm shocked you know so that's why so it, it has really you know it has really helped so i'm going to continue to do those new policies they're working and it's cutting down the wait times um, I have been so blessed, um, you know, the rituals, um, you know, like just very busier than ever with the rituals lately, word of mouth, people getting results and all that. So I've been very happy with that. So I'm going to continue on with the rituals and everything else, rituals, AKA spell work. I do both right and left-handed. So, you know, I do not practice three, four law rules, karm. I don't do that. So Love work, return to sender, domination spells, all those things I do. Um, job spells, um, binding, freezer spells, all those things. I do perform those types of work, separation work, all those things. I do all those things. So old-fashioned root work, spell work, that kind of stuff. I call them ritual in my culture. In the Western culture, you guys call them uh, spell work. I really don't like that, but, you know, whatever. Um, I do perform those as well. So that's all on my website. Okay, now getting to what I wanted to talk about really quickly. Okay, so a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, I feel really called to, you know, do all this like spiritual stuff. And, you know, I feel like I have a calling to spirituality, da 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 da, -da and all this stuff. And, you know, with the whole like social media awakening, it's like a double-edged sword, I feel. Because everybody, you know, the high priestess, which is like literally my t-shirt today, you know, the high priestess, you know, she's sitting there with her Torah and you know what I'm saying? She's all wonderful and love light and, you know, dancing in the woods with crystals and everything. And I was having a conversation about that with my coven recently, but nobody talks about the depression. Nobody talks about when we're going through real life problems. Nobody talks about like how many people try to start a spiritual business and how many spiritual businesses I've seen over the years, you know, people coming to me like, girl, I tried to start a spiritual business and it failed. Or I did tower readings and I didn't realize how annoying people could be. Or like, I don't want to read on this topic or whatever. You know what I mean? Or my spirit, like my business failed or I can't find clients or whatever, whatever. Like, I don't understand or da, 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 da. Like a lot of people start businesses, just like a lot of people open restaurants and most 90% of restaurants or whatever the real stats are, most of them fail. Most spiritual based businesses fail. 
and very few are successful. Like, I'm going to be honest, mine's is, but that doesn't mean everybody's is. So I feel like let's have a real conversation. So, okay, first of all, we start off with the fool. Okay, so some people start off with feeling like spirit is calling us, you know, they start off on this journey, you know, we get into spirituality. Some of us are coming from like spiritual trauma, you know, um, some of us are coming from dogma, if you will, maybe you're atheist, maybe you're coming from like some type of like Christianity or something, you know, or abusive relationship, toxic childhood, whatever it is. And you're like, okay, I have lifted the chains of this religious trauma. Um, I'm, I'm free. I'm, maybe you discover crystals. Maybe some of you are connecting again with your orishas, loas. Maybe you're getting into like paganism, whatever it is. Like you're like, oh my god, I'm free. Um, 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 I discover the chakras, whatever it is. Like it's just like, woo! You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting. I discover Beyonce's song. Uh, you know, woo! by crystal energy i'm salons with the yama yeah you know i'm doing my life i just want to spread the word i want to testify yes lord that i am free you know you're all excited so next thing you know you want to open like a crystal shop you want to tell everybody how like you don't have to like be afraid of hell because you know do 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 you like mad excited you know and then you are buying all the books you are trying to learn tarot, runes, you know, Lenormand, all the things. You are studying everything you got to study. Like, it's mad exciting. You want to tell everybody. You find out a lot of people not into that. You find out a lot of people like, ooh, you're a demon or whatever. Okay. Then you discover YouTube. You see all these beautiful cards, crystals. You want to buy all the crystals, the rocks. You're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Oh my goodness, you're spending all this money, you're doing all this stuff, like, oh my goodness, you just, you cannot read enough books, you want to spell, da, 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 like, you, your first spell works, you're so powerful, you're so excited, everything's so good, Ooh, study, 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 it's exciting. Then you perform your first reading, and maybe your first reading was mad accurate, you're loving it, you're loving it, you're loving it, you're loving it. You might even go to a psychic, and they're like, oh, you're mad psychic, your third eye chakra, oh my goodness, you are a reader, this is your path. So you're like, I'm going to... I think I want to be a reader now. Yes, I love this. I love what this person is doing on TikTokers, Witch Talk, YouTubers, all these kind of things. And you want to do it too. And I think that's good because, hey, I want to do it too. I went to my first reader. I was like, I want to do that too. That's fun. Mm. She's sitting on this knowledge, you know. But then we get stuck on how to manifest it and how to do it. Okay? So I'm going to help you to get from... The study part. Now you activated it. But how do you make it happen? Right? How do you make it happen? This is how you make it happen. You have to be willing to pay the price. So what is the price? The price is, is going to affect your personal life. Because you have to be with a life partner that accepts the fact that clients are going to eat into your romantic life. Point blank. Period. Me, I choose to be single, so that does not affect me. I choose to be single, that does not affect me. There are people in this life that don't want to be married, don't want to be in a relationship. So that person doesn't affect me. But I cannot tell you how many times I've lost count of spiritualists that are getting divorces because they have clients that they have to do client work for. And their spouses are mad because they're doing rituals at 10, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And their spouses are mad because they're not in bed with them. They're not having sexy time with them. They're giving more time to their spirits. They have spouses or partners that don't like that their partners practice voodoo. Or they want their partners to give up their spirituality. This is real and this is true. So there are times that that spiritualist has to decide between their spirits and their full-time spiritual-based business and their life partner. And that's the truth. 
So if your life partner does not respect your spirituality and the time that it takes to devote yourself to clients and spirituality, it's not going to work. Family life. If you have children, balancing your children's needs with that of the need of your children. Your children do not have to practice with you, but they have to be quiet. How many parents have I tried to mentor when they're like, oh, I want to get into business and your kids are running around crazy. I understand. I'm a mother. I'm not dissing your kids. Do not come for me in the comments because I'm not dissing your kids, but I'm also a brown mother and I discipline my kids. I'm, I'm not coming for you. Do not call CPS on me. We're not doing that on this video. I'm just telling you. My children, I'm old school. My children respect and know when I'm working, anybody who's read with me don't even know my kids are home, sometimes sick, right next door. My kids are quiet and they know mommy's working. They have their little, little headphones on, they're on their tablet because they understand at this time to this time, I am working and I have special needs kids and I am not abusing my kids. But they know these are my work hours. This is what is the bread and butter of my home. So there has to be a certain discipline these are my work hours. The, there's certain respect that I ingrain in my children towards the spirits. That is just real life. Fuck. This is not new age parenting. Children cannot be sitting here breaking statues, disrespecting spirits, putting dirty socks on an altar. Okay. And you cannot dedicate part time to your spirits, only going to them when you need something. You got to either be in this wholeheartedly. If you're going to have a spiritual based business or not at all, point blank period. You have to invest finances into it. Spirits got to get paid. Promises got to be met or you ain't going to do it. So you got to dedicate time to your family, time to your love life, but time to your spirits. You got to dedicate income, money. Also, if you're going to be practicing a closed tradition, what the hell are you doing for that marginalized community? I give, I practice Haitian voodoo, so therefore I give money every month to Haiti from the money that I make. Are you doing that? So if you're practicing voodoo and conjure and you're on a full-time voodoo and conjure business, what are you doing for the black community on a monetary, not praying, not doing a crystal grid, not sending intentions, not raising vibrations, not dancing in a circle. What are you doing for the black community that you are servicing, that you are taking money from? What are you doing for them as a whole with money? What charities are you donating? What timing? Because that's what I do. If you're going to take from a community, you're going to give back to that community. And you're also going to give to those spirits of those communities. I give to charities. If I take from, if I am working with black spirits, if I'm working with indigenous spirits, which I do, then I also give to indigenous communities because I do money. And I also give physically, spiritually, emotionally to indigenous spirits. You have to do all of it, okay? You have to give time. Six days a week, I am giving something to my spirits. I am in ritual. I'm giving monetary. I'm giving time. I'm giving emotions. I'm giving all of it. I'm all in. There is no such thing as a nine to five when you are self-employed. This is what a lot of people do not understand. They think that self-employed means less stress. No, self-employed means more stress. I had less stress working as a CNA. I had less stress when I was later went to school and became an LPN and then eventually went back to college and became a therapist. I had less stress because at least then my job ended when my job ended. When I punched out, my day was over and then it was just me and my kids. Now my job never ends until I go to sleep. So again, you never have time for yourself most of the time. Even your days off are not your days off. I'm constantly always having to figure out ways to make money. This takes a physical toll on me. That's why I have to disappear sometimes from social media and things like that. This takes pure dedication. This is not a lifestyle. Do not be fooled by the crystals and the things. What I learned too, 
that I've actually talked to a lot of people, do not be fooled by a lot of people that have huge followings because I've talked to those people and don't come to me from the comment section. A lot of people, unless they get sponsorships and things like that, are not really making money off of those things, okay? When it comes to like their side business and things like that. I make money off my business, not from my YouTube. I do not make a lot of money off YouTube. I make money from people booking my readings, my classes, things like that, my rituals, things that work outside of YouTube, right? Because I have a loyal client base, have a large loyal client base, okay? It's really hard to make money off YouTube, even if you have a lot of views and stuff like that. A lot of people are not really making money off YouTube. So if you think you're going to go viral and make a bunch of money off YouTube, that is not true unless you get sponsorships and things like that. Okay, so a lot of people are selling you this false narrative of spirituality. Like you do all these crystals and you do all this the woo 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 stuff. Your life is going to be perfect. That is not true. Okay, there's more to spirituality than aesthetics. Okay. There's more to spirituality than aesthetics. They're not living that woo-woo life, okay? They're not living that woo-woo life. Um, doing this full-time, okay, you have to be willing to be dedicated. You also have to set up boundaries because your clients will suck the life out of you if you do not set up healthy boundaries. People are going to come to you broken, and if you do not set up healthy boundaries, they will literally suck you dry. You know how many spiritual people... I have personally known they have given into depression. They have literally have unalive themselves or self-harmed themselves because they have given into such depression because of all the sad things they see and all the depressive energy they've seen from other people because they never have time to self-care. You know what I'm saying? So it's very important that if you're going to do this, you start now dealing with your own shadow work. Because it takes really thick skin to hear the stories of the people that are going to come to you, especially if you get someone who's going to do energy work for other people, okay? There are going to be abusive people that come to you. They're going to be like, you're fake, you're nasty. They're going to play on your insecurity. So you have to be careful. You have to have strong skin. And if you could say, yes, I can have healthy boundaries in my personal life, yes, I can take care of myself and make sure that I give the time, that I give back to my community, that I could be dedicated, I could set healthy boundaries, that I can uh, make sure nobody abuses me, that I can be strong. If you still want to do this, this path is worth it. And this path is rewarding, okay? But I felt very intuitively to have a very, very honest conversation about what it truly takes to be a full-time spiritualist. It is a very rewarding calling, but I feel like too many people sugarcoat it and don't tell you what the truth is. It's a hard path, but it's a worthwhile path. Much love, much light, much blessings. Thank you so much. And one last thing, it takes a lot of faith, a lot of faith, because, you know, you're pretty much living on faith, you know? It's not a set income every time, so you... you some people walk on sunshine. We're walking literally on faith with our spirits. You know, you, you got to have that relationship with your spirits. So they could guide you every step of the way. If you want to work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, shamanicatworkpriestess.com, shamanicatworkpriestess.com. And there you can book a private reading with me. And thank you so much for watching this video. And your secret emoji is a uh, emoji with his tongue sticking out. An emoji with his tongue sticking out and make a stupid comment like um love your earrings and with the emoji with the tongue sticking out and i'll enter you on the secret giveaway remember the comment love your earrings emoji with the tongue sticking out and i know that you watched the video all the way through bye